Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is actually part three of a series on the balance of payments. You'll find links to part one and part two in the description below. Previously, we learned about the different accounts and sub accounts into which transactions get sorted, including the current financial and capital account. We also looked at the relationships between them. Today, I wanna to talk about the influences on the current account. And as I mentioned in previous videos, this is where the big marks are. Influences on the current account can be described as cyclical or structural. Cyclical influences are the ones that are more short-term in nature and tend to be influenced by changes in the business cycle. Structural influences are the more ongoing underlying factors. Today, I'll be explaining the influences on BOGS. The first cyclical influence on BOGS I'll go through is also the most obvious, or at least the most observable, the influence of the international business cycle, particularly the economic activity of our trading partners. If you look at their GDP growth alongside our BOGS, you'll see a strong correlation See, in 2010 and 11, their GDP growth rates peaked, and this is also where our bogs went surplus. Conversely, when the GDP growth slowed after this period, you could see bogs deteriorate back into deficit. This is because when our trading partners are experiencing growth, they have increases in disposable income and production, which means they will purchase more Australian exports, leading to more credits in our bogs account. The next cyclical influence on bogs is domestic growth. Reflecting the previous point, when Australia is experiencing economic growth, we have higher disposable income, production increases, and this contributes to a higher import spending and more debits from our box account. As you can see from the graphs, drops in Australian GDP growth such as during the GFC coincides with drops in import volumes. Another cyclical influence on box is terms of trade. The mathematical definition is export price index over import price index. But what is the significance of this and what does it have to do with box? Many students get confused by this, so I'll make it simple for you. In Australia's context, a higher terms of trade is generally driven by high export demand. This is because if demand for exports increase without an increase in supply, it will cause export prices to increase relative to import prices, therefore making terms of trade higher. This increased demand for exports is what causes more credits and an improvement in the BOGS deficit. And this is why a BOGS surplus is often correlated with a high terms of trade like in 2011, and in low terms of trade is often seen with a worsened box deficit. So if you're confused by terms of trade, just simplify it to two things to remember. One, remember the formula, which is export price index over import price index. And two, remember that it's just an indicator for demand for exports in Australia, that is. One more very important cyclical influence on box is the exchange rate. But because of its complexity, I wanna devote a whole video to cover it. Look out for that in the description or the comments below. And those cyclical influences would explain the main fluctuations in BOGS. But if you try to observe a long-term trend, you would deduce that BOGS spends more time in deficit than in surplus. That is, we generally spend more imports than we earn on exports. This suggests that there are some long-term or structural influences that we should try and understand. The first structural influence that explains a long-term deficit is that we have a narrow export base. Australia has been heavily reliant on exporting commodities. There are a few issues with this. Firstly, it's a low value added industry. This means that there is a low profit margin and we have to export extremely high volumes in order to make a lot of revenue. Secondly, it's a very volatile industry. Demand for commodities is highly dependent on the regional business cycle, which obviously fluctuates outside of our domestic economy's control. Thirdly, it's a finite industry that employs a large workforce. One day, we may run out of these non-reversible resources to export and many miners will lose their jobs. These miners' skills are not easily transferable to other occupations. That is, they have low occupational mobility. So when they lose their jobs, it'll take a long time for them to find a job where the skills are relevant or a long time for them to be retrained. Supporting these workers would also be a strain on the fiscal budget. That's why some economists would argue that it's worth diversifying into other high value added and sustainable resources. Our recent shift towards providing education, tourism, and financial services as exports is a great development towards this end. Many teachers also cover a concept called Dutch disease, which can contribute to a narrow export base. I'll cover that in another video as well. The second structural issue that causes a bogs deficit is that we lack international competitiveness. The costs of production in Australia are very high. This can be attributed to high centralized wages, high taxes that get passed on in the form of higher prices, as well as comparatively low productivity overall. 
This leads to us shutting down many export industries such as manufacturing, and we end up importing high value added products, both leading to a worsened box deficit. The final structural issue that I will cover is capacity constraints. We simply do not have the productive capacity to be competitive and respond to global demand. Two main constraints are poor infrastructure and skill shortages. When I say poor infrastructure, I'm told about overcrowded roads, airports and shipping docks where productive capacity is lost due to time stuck in traffic congestion. But I'm also talking about telecommunications infrastructure too. A lack of reliable high-speed internet connections means that we are, again, wasting time, as well as missing opportunities to exchange ideas, innovate, and take advantage of existing technology available to other countries. Skill shortages also restrain how effectively Australian workers can respond to global demand. China is keen to send international students to Australia, and if we have a shortage of skilled teachers, we miss out on an opportunity to export education. What these mean for BOGS is that even if global demand is turned towards Australia's exports, we might not have the capacity to supply this demand. So to recap, we have covered influences on box. The cyclical influences include the international business cycle, our own domestic business cycle, the terms of trade, and the exchange rate. Structural factors include a narrow export base and Dutch disease, lack of international competitiveness, and capacity constraints. These are some pretty complex concepts and links, but I hope I've made it easier for you to understand. After all, that is my aim here at Economics Made Easy. If this video has helped you, hit the like and subscribe buttons, leave a comment and share the video. Next time we'll be covering the influences on NPY and you don't want to miss that. I'll see you next time.